So now we set up two interfaces, two ports. Um, the first one is the LAN port, which has to do with, um, which is ports. The LAN port is port two uh, and the one port is port three. So let's label them so that we can, so we can give them alias LAN or internal network. Internal network. So which is the LAN as well, uh, click OK. Then we have um, the uh, port three as we can give it uh, one. One means one area uh, network and it's also, it's, it's also indicates your ISP uh, port that you've connected your ISP on. So we have uh, internet network and we have one network. So with that alias, you can label each of those ports for, you know, for easy, uh, for easy uh, readability of uh, and, and all that. Then another thing is setting up your DNS. Uh, you can decide to use the default uh, DNS and you can specify a DNS um, server. So if you have an environment that has an internal DNS server that's working well, you can you know, include here, include it here, and you can give it a name. The local uh, DNS, the DNS name, can also be uh, given here to uh, the fourth gate so that you can be able to recognize it uh, very well. Then the next thing you want to do is static route. Static route ensures that uh, both your fourth gate device and the device you are connecting to the fourth gate device have access to internet. If you don't set up this this uh, static route. Um, Fort Gates will now have access to the internet uh, regardless of number of ISP connections that you put in. So the static route has to be in place. And uh, setting up the static route, we know the default route uh, is always to the destination of 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0, 0, 0, 0. So we have uh, gateway as 10.192.168.100.0. Uh, then uh, the interface that is connected to the one interface is port three. So this will be selected in this interface um, interface bar. So you select port three because that's your ISP um, that you just configured now. And you can define your administrative distance depending on how you want it and ensure uh, the status is enabled. Once that is done, the device, uh, the fourth gate itself should have access to the internet. And you have to confirm before anything else on the, uh, that you're configuring, before anything can have access to the internet or your users can have access to the internet, fourth gate must have first have access to the internet, you know? And you can confirm by just, you know, clicking on the uh, the CLI. So the, the uh, fourth gate has an inbuilt CLI uh, dashboard that um, yeah, inbuilt the uh, CLI uh, bar that you can bring up instead of using uh, maybe Putty or every other, any other external um, software uh, package. So you can use this internal to bring up the CLI and you know using the command uh, execute ping. Execute ping um, is to confirm the reachability to the IP addresses you are trying to have access to. So this shows that the fourth gate device have access to the, to the internet. Um, if we, if I disable, let me disable, let me go back to uh, this internet. Uh, let me see. Yeah. So if you look at this, if I, let me disable, let me delete this and let me check again. Uh, So if you if you delete this, let me delete this. Um, so now if you check, let's check again, execute ping it. So Fort Gate does not have access to the internet. So the first thing you need to do, why well, you need to be able to um, configure uh, the default route so that uh, Fort Gate can have access to the internet. And so that when you're doing your registration, you are registering the device, 
on uh, the fourth gate port on the Fortinet portal, um, it will be able to sync with the with the portal to you know sync your licenses. Um, if you have maybe UTM license that like um, antivirus um, for the security profiles and all that, it can it it will be able to sync it uh, with the internet accessibility. So using the uh, checking this in again now, we have access to the internet now. 